Hi, welcome back to Engine Shop Joe in our continuing short series of talking about parts on the engine. Tonight we're going to talk about the fuel actuator. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so it helps other people to find it when they search and then uh, we can help them as well. I, I wanted to talk about the fuel actuator. It's a part that um, I misunderstood its function for a while. I assumed it worked one way and it actually worked the opposite. So the fuel actuator is probably the most important piece in the high pressure fuel system. It's actually in the, in the I'm going to call it the medium pressure side of the fuel system. So the low pressure side of the fuel system would be from the lift, electric lift pump when it's running to the gear pump. And when the electric lift pump's running, the pressure is going to be anywhere from about 12 PSI to 40 PSI, depending on the generation of lift pump you have. And then once the engine's cranking, the gear pump makes pressure. And now we're, when it's idling or running, the gear pump is making medium pressure, which I'm going to, uh, I'm going to call it medium. It's between about 120 and 200 PSI. That's what's in the filter on the engine. And then that's the pressure that the actuator we're going to be talking about tonight sees. And then the high pressure part of the fuel system can, can, will compress that pressure all the way up to uh, close to 40,000 or 41,000 on the ISX-12. On the X-15s or ISX-15, you don't get much past 37,000, 36,000. But the actuator controls all that pressure that's in the rail. It, it's what determines whether the pump's going to pump more pressure in the rail or pump less pressure in the rail. And actually it's controlling how much volume goes in the rail. The pressure just made by pumping more and more fuel into, into the same finite space, which is the rail and the fuel lines and the connectors, that's, that makes up the high pressure part of the fuel system and the steel lines that are involved in that. So uh, the actuator is a normally open device. When you turn the key on, the ECM closes it, and then it'll, it'll start to open it up so that it can allow fuel to go to the high pressure pump head. If it closes 100%, it will send all the refuel, all the fuel that it gets to the return. Um, the actuator has a small passage. It goes into the aluminum, it bolts into the aluminum fuel block. And in there, there's a small passage that's drilled vertically. And that allows any air that got that far into the fuel system to go back into the return. So that's your Hail Mary last chance to get any air out of the fuel system before it goes into the high pressure pumping chambers. And you really should have no air going into that, that solenoid. And that's what the uh, fuel actuator is. Uh, it is the, um, it's a solenoid or a winding over a spool valve. And then the ECM uses a pulse width to drive that. So it's two pins on the harness and one is a return and one is a signal. They call it a signal, but that's where the ECM will pulse that solenoid to open the spool valve farther or close the spool valve a little bit more. Uh, if you unplug the actuator, it goes full open and then you'll make uh, about 27,000 PSI in the rail at idle. Uh, if you left it unplugged and you rev the engine up, you would probably um, open up the rail relief valve, but at idle, it doesn't get much over 27,000. Uh, the system designed so that idle, at idle, if the act if you unplug the actuator, it'll it'll kind of cap out at 27,000. And by the way, the high pressure fuel system test takes the pressure to 27,000. However, if you rev the engine up. And, and that test is on, it'll kick the test right off. 
Why? Because now it can't control that pressure and it's making that pressure of about 27,000 uh, because that's what it's designed to do when you're looking for problems with leakage. Okay, and again, at 27,000, the rail dump should not be open at all. So, uh, back to the actuator. Two wire, what can happen to them? Well, it's a moving part that moves all day long back and forth. So, it's a high wear part. As it wears, it becomes less accurate. So, if you've got four, three, four, five hundred thousand miles on your engine and you start having trouble with 559s and you have no air in the fuel, and the pressures are right in the filter, everything looks good, you put new filters on, you know there's no air, you might wanna try changing the actuator. If you have trouble with the engine starting and you're not making rail pressure when you crank it, it can be the actuator, it can, it can hang uh, open and then when it pulse widths to close it, it doesn't close and it dumps too much fuel at cranking and the engine can't build enough pressure to start. So the actuator can cause some problems. Uh, you should not ever run the engine with that unplugged. Uh, we used to do that to just see if it would start. And um, if you unplug it, the engine does start and does go to about 27,000. But... Uh, you really don't need to do that if everything's working right because the ECM wants to control that rail pressure at about 5,000 for starting. So uh, let's take a look at the actuator where it is. This is an X15 and it's bolted into the fuel block that bolts onto the high pressure pump head. You'll always find that actuator either in that aluminum housing which is on the mid-range and, and the heavy duty that bolts to the pump head or on the brand new X15s, you might find the actuator right in the pump head. Uh, they're all, these fuel systems, are, the generations are always changing. Where they put things is always changing. So that's one reason you always want to go to QuickServe online and look at a parts explosion of your engine to see where things are if you can't look at them and identify them by eye. So let's take a look. So here's that actuator, there's a close-up of it. On the bottom is the harness going to it, and that goes up into the side of that solenoid. That's what looks like a screw driver slot on the back is just the end of the shaft in the solenoid. It's not a screw, there's no adjustment there. Do not try to turn that. If you turn it, you have damaged your actuator. The actuator is held to that aluminum housing by three small um, torque screws and then it pulls out. There's a, a couple O-rings on it and you just snap it in, put a little um, oil on the O-rings and snap it in and pull it out. If the O-rings get cut on it when you put it in, there's a blue O-ring. If that gets cut, it will have a very difficult time uh, controlling fuel pressure and you may even have a lot of 1911s which is over pressure, too much fuel pressure in the rail. Here is a view backed up of the actuator so you can see where it's at on the pump assembly. It's down towards the middle of the picture and you see the aluminum housing that it bolts into that large assembly above it's the air compressor and then that steel line to the left of it that goes to the front of the engine. That is the return line bolted on the high pressure pump head. This is a CM2350 that you're looking at. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe.